very dear and senior Vaishnav disciple of Param Pujapad Sila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada uh, Drishta Prabhu to say a few words. I'm very honored to be here and to be able to hear the, the very nice guitar that Sri Prabhupada who is, is presenting. We, uh, we gained so much from hearing from him. And I was saying yesterday uh, that I didn't have the opportunity to to get the association directly of of um, uh, Sri Narayan or uh, Gurudev, but when I hear from a person like Sri Frank Roja, who, who is a dear servant of his guru, uh, I know that we're, that I'm hearing the Siddhanta as Sri Narayan Maharaj would present it. And I know Srila Narayan Maharaj was asked by my Gurudev, Srila Prabhupada, to give instructions to all his disciples after he left the planet along with the Arshriya Maharaj. So that it's this wonderful holy association of advanced Vaishnavas that, that really uh, changes the heart. And I'm very, very much grateful to have that opportunity as, as my wife for drying. We, we, feel that it's well worth traveling to get association and to hear um, the kata of, uh, of, of, of pure Vaishnavas who are presenting Krishna consciousness in a way which is so enlightened. So I'd just like to say thank you very much to Sri Prabhupada. Yeah. Thank you. Also, I would like to request our very dear Sumati Swati Didi, can, can you say a few words? Shri Prabhupada wanted for all of us. 
and he made it very, very clear that he is the eternal servant of Shiva Goswami. So therefore, we are also inheriting that great wealth. And I'm very uh, honored to be here and to continue to pursue this path and to hear all the conclusive truths. And especially um, this evening, I'm very interested to hear uh, Shimashi Radhika's three desires and the podcast three desires. I'm not going to speak any longer. <laughs> I can have my desire. <laughs> <laughs> So we're coming to that subject, uh, the, both of those subjects, but it will take tomorrow and the next day will complete. So we're going there gradually. So there should be a little more anxiety. <laughs> with, it's, we're going there gradually, step by step. Thousands and thousands of times, 
at the lotus feet of my holy master, my supremely worshipable spiritual Gurudev, Asmadeya Paramarada Tama Guru Pada Padma, and Nitya Pravishta Om Vishnu Pada, Ashtotara Satasi Srimad, Rupanuga Acharya Varya, Sila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. Secondly, I have my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my Param Gurudev to Srila Prabhupada and to all of our Sri Rupanuga Gaudiya Guru Parampara. And finally, I offer my pranam to all the assembled Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis, Panchakal Paturu Bestal, Kapas, and the Devitas, and the Tamas, and the Vaishnavas. Sri Satyananda and Gauhari appeared in this world. Yesterday we discussed to establish Yuga Dharma. Harinam Sankirtan. And through that Harinam Sankirtan, if that Kirtan is San Kirtan. San here means Sarvato Bhavain Kirtan. Kirtan which is performed with Sambandha Gyan. Understanding our Sambandha relation with Krishna. Free from Anartha. Free from Aparad. And in the association of Brajrasik Vaishnavas. Then it is called Sarvato Bhavain Kirtan. Complete Kirtan San Kirtan. If Kirtan is performed in that way, then the primary external reason for Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's appearance becomes fulfilled. That is Samar Paitum Unnat Ujwala Rasam Swapakti Sriyam. This distribution of Radha Dasa. Srinath Chakravati Thakur has summarized the whole teaching of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the first verse of his Chaitanya, Mat- Chaitanya Matamanjusa. There he said, Aradhya Bhagavan Brajesha Tanyas Tadham Brindavana Ramya Kachit Upasana Brajabudhu Pargena Yakalpita Srimad Bhagavatam Pramana Mamalam Prema Pumato Pumam Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Matamidam Tatradana Napara. First of all, Aradya Bhagavan Brajay Shatanya. Our object of worship, Bhagavan, Supreme Lord, He is the Atvayan Paratattva. Vadanti Tattvavitas Tattvam Yad Jnana Matvayam Brahmeti Paramatmeti Bhagavan Iti Shabdhite. The Supreme Reality is one. But when that Supreme Reality is perceived in which there is no perception of the variegatedness of Shakti and Shakti Man, then we say, oh, this is Brahman. When there is perception of that <coughs> one absolute truth with some little Shakti manifest, that means, yeah, Krishna said, Eka Ang Sainas Titojagat. By one small particle of myself, I am maintaining the whole universe. Mama Tejangsa Sambhavan, all wondrous, splendorous, beautiful things have come from but a spark of my splendor. That's Paramatma. His expansion of expansion of expansion of expansion of Krishna. And really, he does not have any developed lila. His Leela is Srishti Leela. Creation and he's a Shakshi. He's situated in the heart watching everything but without any attachment. So when there's a vision of that Supreme Reality but only a little of his Shakti is manifest and he's just doing uh, two things in his Leela Srishti and Shakshi. Creating and observing then that's called Paramatma. 
it is not a full vision, complete vision. Hmm? Brahman is realized by oh, just a touch of a Sandit Shakti. And if there is some more Sandit Shakti and some Sandini Shakti, then you can realize uh, Paramatma. But when Satchit and Ananda, Samvit, Sandini and Hadini, all the vrittis of Krishna's internal potency enter into the heart of the devotee, then that same one truth he sees as Bhagavan. Bhagavan iti shabdhyate. Some impersonists consider that the Jiva himself is the absolute truth. But Srimad Bhagavatam does not accept. It's not mentioned anywhere. Brahmeti, Paramatmeti, Jiveti. <laughs> it's not included in that. So Jiva is Anu. Very tiny, insignificant Parikara of Paramatma. His Paramatma Vaibhava. One Paramatma Vaibhava. That means the Vaibhav, the Vibhuti, a little spark of the energy of Paramatma. So Jiva Goswami has called the Jiva Paramatma Vaibhava, or he is to be counted Paramatma Parikara issue among the associates of Paramatma. So, uh, so, Bhagavan, this is the full tattva. But here it is said, don't worship Bhagavan as a tattva. Aradha Bhagavan Brajeshatanaya. We serve Krishna as Brajeshatanaya, the son of Nanda Maharaj, who has come from the Tanu, from the body of Nanda and Yashoda, is called Brajeshatanaya the son of the king of the cowherd village. So we don't uh, serve or worship Krishna as a tattva. We serve him as Leela Bihari. Leela Bihari. He is an enjoyer of loving pastimes with his family and friends in Braja. That is our supreme object of Aradhana service. Taddam Brindabhanam. And as Krishna is worshipable, his Vrindavan is also worshipable. Why? Because it is uh, Tadrupa Swarup, Tadrupa Vaibhava. Vrindavan itself is the Vaibhava of Krishna's own spiritual Swarup. Mm-hmm. You know, in the scriptures it is said, Venum Konantam Aravinda Dalayataksham. Bahavitam samasitam udasundaran kandarpa koti kamaniya visheshashubhavam gohuvindam adipurusham tamaham bhajami Lord Brahma is praying in this way. To see Krishna, he is saying, Krishna's eyes are like lotus petals. And his compression is like a rain cloud. So, but the Tarsi Krishna Nama Di Nabavat Indriya, Krishna's name, form, quality, everything is beyond our mind and senses. So when the scripture said Krishna's eyes are like lotuses, it doesn't mean like a lotus that you have seen in this world. Like a fresh rain cloud, not like a fresh rain cloud of this world. Because the being completely transcendental. If you compare, if you say to someone, your eyes are like a lotus flower, that means actually the lotus flower is more like a lotus flower than your eyes. Your eyes are similar, but not so beautiful, but like that. So it would put Krishna in a secondary position. When the Shastra said that Krishna is, his eyes are like lotus petals, that means the lotus petals in the spiritual world. The clouds there, those things with which Krishna is compared in the spiritual world, they can be like him, similar to him, because they're actually the vibhava of his own surup. It's an extension of his own beauty. Can I just ask a question? What does that mean? Uh, it means uh, opulence. Okay. It, me- it means, actually, visheshru pain, bhav. Bhav means existence. And existing in a separate form, with some speciality, the same thing existing in a separate form, uh, its shakti, 
or influence that is called Vaibhav, Vibhuti. So, for example, Sri Krishna, he wears the Kastuva money upon his chest. And so when Krishna comes into this world, Kamsa Maharaj and others who don't have bhakti, they see Krishna, they see him like an ordinary human being wearing a shining jewel on his chest. Because Krishna said, Naham prakasha sabasha yoga maya samavrata. I'm not visible to everyone. I'm covered by yoga maya. So one may, someone may say, well, Kamsa Maharaj, he was visible to Kamsa Maharaj. No, those who are not devotees, whose eyes are not tinged with the sabala, they see. But they don't actually see his beauty and sweetness. Because that for Kamsa Maharaj, the Kostuba money on Krishna's chest is shining more than Krishna. But for those who have love, then Krishna's sh chest is shining more than his Kostuba money. So, Arahatya Bhagavan Brajeshatanyas Taddama Brindhavanam. Krishna in the form of Leela Bihari is the object of our service. And his Dham Brindavan is Satchidananda Moy. It is the mm, Vibhuti, the Vaibhav, the opulence of his Swarup manifested outside in the form of his playground. Taddama Brindavanam. So it's also wishful. And if Krishna is the object of service, then how is he to be served? What's the best way of serving him? The method of service which is expressed by the gopis of Vrindavan. This is the best method of service. And then the question will come, well, how will I find out about Braja Gopi's love? So then, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's answer is, Srimad Bhagavatam Pura Pramanam Amalam. It is the Praman. It is the evidence. And it is completely Amal, immaculate and perfect. And it teaches us, Prema Pumato Mahan, that praying love, following in the wake of those gopis of Vrindavan, for Sri Krishna. This is the supreme goal of life. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Matabiram Tatra Ranapara. This is the much the opinion of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And there is no uh, for which I have the highest respect, the greatest honor. There is no uh, higher conception. Nothing more than this. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself. He said, Krishna Bhakti Rasa Swarup Sri Bhagavat. Sarva Veda Shastra Vaiti Parama Mahatta. Because Srimad Bhagavatam is Bhakti Rasa Swarup, the embodiment of all Rasa, it is Krishna's own Swarup. It is a van, Krishna's Vanmayi Murti, Krishna's incarnation in the form of a Granta. So, Sarva Veda Shastra Vaiti Parama Mahatta. In comparison with all other Vedic literatures, Srimad Bhagavatam is the topmost. So this Srimad Bhagavatam, it has achincha shakti, inconceivable power to awaken love for Sri Krishna. <coughs> if we'll hear it from the lips of a Bhakta Bhagavat, a realized Vaishnava, then there's no doubt. Vyasa Srila Vyasadeva himself has said, Sadyo vritte avarudhate attak to be susru sabis takchanat. Even if you don't hear it, you just develop a desire to hear Srimad Bhagavatam from the lips of a Rasik Vaishnava. Krishna becomes so ecstatic that he goes into your heart. Tachanat means in that very moment. Tachanat means from that moment, meaning that he comes in your heart just when you desire to hear. Srimad Bhagavatam from Arasik Vaishnava and from that moment he never leaves you. Why? Sadhyo Vritti Avaruda is trapped. Hmm? So Krishna, Ama Bhakta Prame Bandhyachi Ridea Bithari Yahaya Nitrapari Dekaya Mari Krishna can only be trapped by praying. So Srila Vyasadeva is saying this Srimad Bhagavatam has Achincha Shakti. 
just desiring to hear it and see Krishna becomes trapped in your heart and will not leave you for your whole life ever Tachanat also means Kshana means moment and Kshana also mean, means Mahutsava a great festival so Sadhyori Devat Rudhichayat Kribi Susurusabis Tachanat Tat means Param Tattva Sri Krishna Kshanat this Srimad Bhagavatam is a festival of Prema Rasa for Krishna so when you desire to sit down and listen to Srimad Bhagavatam, Krishna says, wait for me. And he runs and he sits down in your heart because he wants to listen to Srimad Bhagavatam too. Because it's a festival of praying for him. Because there, especially the Mahabhav of Srimati Radhika has been glorified directly or indirectly throughout Srimad Bhagavatam. In the Muktafal of Bhopadev and in the commentary on that by Himadri, there's a very beautiful verse that our Acharyas have accepted. There he said, Vedaha Puranam Kabyam Cha Prabhur Mitram Priyeva Cha Bodhi Antithi Prahus Trivrit Bhagavatam Punaha it means that the Vedas, the Puranas, and Kavya, poetry, they instruct us in different ways. The Vedas give orders. They say directly, Satyam Bada, tell the truth. Dharma Chara, follow your Dharma. Uchishtata Jagrata Prapya Param Nibodata Wake up, get up and try to attain the goal of life. These are all imperatives, commands. Do it. So Vedas instruct us like Prabhu, like a like a king or like a guru. So that method of giving instructions and bodhiantiti, that means awakening us making us understand, just instruction, do this. Then, this is called Guru Sammat Padavali. Guru Sammat Padavali. Instructions like a Guru. So, then Veda Puranam. The Puranas, they instruct us how Guru Mitram Prayevacha like a mitra, a friend. See, a friend doesn't take a position of being superior and giving an order. But if a friend wants to tell you something, you're going through something in your life, then your friend, just to give you some advice in a gentle way, knowing that you may be a bit prickly and defensive, uh, he may tell a story. You know, I had an uncle who was in a situation like this once, and he did this and this, and this was the result. And in this way, by telling a story, you listen to it and then, and you learn that you get the lesson. So the Puranas, they teach us like that. And then, Kavya. Kavya means poetry. Prabhu Mitram Prayevacha. So, the Puranas instruct us, that is called Mitra Sammat Padhavali. Instruction like a friend. But Kavya is called Kanta Sammat Padavali. Kanta Sammat Padavali. Like a Priya. Kavya poetry instructs us like a beloved, like a lover. In Vedic culture, the wife or the beloved she does not argue and shout and give instructions to her beloved. But she smiles very sweetly and speaks in such a charming way that somehow or other her beloved will get the hint of what she wants to say. And also, how she speaks is gives so much happiness to her beloved 
that he's learning so much without even recognizing, without even thinking that he's learning. So Kavya instructs us in this way. So here, Bhopadev, Himatri, they're writing that Bodhi entity he pravus trivit Bhagavatam punaha Srimad Bhagavatam instructs in all three ways. So if you hear Srimad Bhagavatam, study Srimad Bhagavatam, then you'll see sometimes Srimad Bhagavatam gives an order. In the, in the Mangalacharnam, Srila Vyasadeva said, Nigama kalpataro galitam palam Shukamuka damrita travasam yutam Pibat bhagutam rasamalayam Muraho rasika bubi bhavukaha Oh, you are rasik and bhavuk expert in relishing the mellows and whose hearts are melted with ecstatic emotional love for Krishna, then Pibata Bhagavatam, drink it! Drink this Rasa Srimad Bhagavatam, Rasam Alayam, Alay, means, Alay can mean a destruction, in other words, the destruction of your material existence, drink it until you are liberated. All the way up to liberation, then Mahur, and after liberation, drink it again. In other words, Srimad Bhagavatam is always relevant. Even Radha and Krishna themselves, when they come into this world in the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Gadara Pandit, Mahaprabhu was going every day to Tota Gopinath and hearing Gadara Pandit recite Srimad Bhagavatam. Sometimes on the bank of Narendra Sarova, Gadara Pandit would give class there and Mahaprabhu would come and listen. So even Radha and Krishna, they're relishing their own love through Srimad Bhagavatam. So what to speak of us? Alayam, like can also mean fainting. So Srila Vyasadeva said, drink this nectar of Srimad Bhagavatam until you faint in ecstasy. Then when you wake up, Mahur, that means again, drink it again and faint again. Drink again and faint again. Pipata Bhagavatam, here, Pipata Bhagavatam Rasamalayam. The word Bhagavata is a slash alankar. In poetry, so many different types of alankars, that is, figures of speech, uh, like similes, metaphor, onomatopoeia, metonyms, and alliteration. There are many different types of alankars in Sanskrit language. And one is called slesh alankar. Slesh alankar means any particular word can only have one primary meaning. So if you see a word and it has two meanings, it means Actually, there are two words there. But these two words have embraced each other. So it's called Shlesha Lankar. Mm. The ornament of the embrace of two words. So it looks like one word. So here the Shlesha Lankar, Vipata Bhagavatam Rasa, he Bhagavatam means Eka Bhagavata Bada Bhakti Rasa Shastra Ara Bhagavata Bhakta Bhakti Rasa Patra It is the book Bhagavatam, the great scripture Bhagavatam, and it also means the devotee who is Bhakti Rasapatra, who is a full of the nectar of the Bhakti Rasa, drink the nectar of the combination of these two. So, Krishna Kavaraj Goswami said, Eidui Bhagavata Dvara Diya Bhakti Ras Tahara Ridoya Tara Prema Hoyavash By the action of the book Bhagavatam and the person Bhagavatam, then the mellows of Premaras become infused into one's heart. And then Krishna comes under one's control. So, Pipata Bhagavatam Rasamalaya Moraho Rasika Bhuvi Bhavuka. He Rasika means, especially Shimati Radharani, she's Rasik. And her Sakis, they're also relishing. But they're all they hear each other, their own words in separation from Krishna. They're relishing these words. The sound vibration of Srimad Bhagavatam, Yasam Harikatut Gitam Punati Bhuvanatrayam. And when they speak this katha, it purifies the three worlds. Hmm? And Bhuvi Bhavukaha, so Radhika and her associates, and they come into this world in the form of our parampara, Saurabh Damodar, 
Goswami, Rupa Goswami, Sila Bhakti Nantaku, Al Gurudev, they are Rasika. So they are relishing and Bhuvi Bhavuk and Bhavuk means the sadhakas, the general persons who are under their guidance and gradually by listening to them they become full of bhav. So Muhu Aho Rasika Bhuvi Bhavuka. So Srimad Bhagavatam gives direct orders. And sometimes Srimad Bhagavatam gives, it's because it's called Bhagavad Purana, it instructs us like a friend by telling us a story. But even that we have to listen, hear from qualified Vaishnavas to understand the meaning because it's so profound. Each and every episode of Srimad Bhagavatam is teaching us something very important. For example, perhaps you have heard the pastime of the demons and the demigods churning the ocean of milk. So what is this telling us about? What do we learn from this? It's very Gambir. In this pastime, Supreme Lord appears in five forms. He appears as Karmadev to hold the mountain up because the, they couldn't lift it, it crushed them. He appears on the top of the mountain in a Vishnu form. He appears as Ajit churning along with the demigods. He appears as Danvantari to bring the nectar when the churning is complete. And then he comes again as Mohini Murti and cheats the demons and gives it to the demigods. Mm. Now, the question comes, is Bhagavan under the control of karma? Because he seems to be. Is he involved in dualities? Because he's appearing in different forms and he's interacting. The demigods are in Sattvagun and the demons are in Rajagun and Tamagun. And he's taking side of Sattva over Rajas and Tamas. So, who is this Krishna you're talking about? He must be a part of Maya. Because he's in complete duality. He's interacting with persons in Sattva Gun, Rajagun and Tamagun. He's taking sides. What's going on here? But you see, that the demons and demons, they had no strength to churn the ocean of milk. So, Shukadev Goswami Pad, he said that the mode of goodness increased to empower the demigods in churning. The mode of passion increased to empower the demons so that they could also churn. And the mode of ignorance increased in Vasuki to give like an anesthetic because he was in so much pain from everyone stretching him around the mountain. Uh -huh. So that he could tolerate this. The mode of ignorance in increased in him so he, he became inert and couldn't feel it. Okay. Now, then you should scratch your head and think, what's going on here? Because Krishna has directly said in the Bhagavad Gita that sometimes sattva increases and the other two go down, or rajas increases and the other two go down, or tamas increases and the other two go down. He says that they can't all increase or decrease at the same time. So how is it possible that in this lila everything is increasing at the same time? Why? Because Actually, even though it looks that as if Bhagavan is interacting with the external energy, he's not. He never interacts with the external energy. <coughs> but rather, his Swarup Shakti enters into all the personalities there, unseen and unrealized even by them. And he's interacting with his own energy, not with them at all. It becomes, it is said, that the movement of the Swarup Shakti is the Mukya Vritti, is the main force. And the, all the bodies of the demons and the demigods who made a Sattva Gun, Rajas and Tamagun, that is the uh, Abbas Vritti, it's like a shadow. So the Swarup Shakti is actually doing everything and everything else, but the material energy is moving in exact synchronization with the Swarup Shakti. Mm. So that Krishna can do his pastime and everything is being orchestrated by his internal potency. He never interacts with the external energy. Even those, those living entities who are in the Leela, they are not aware of that. So, 
Bharat Muni, he has said, Yada si srikshu pura atmana paro Raja si jit esha pritaksva mayaya Satvam vitrichasu virangsu ishvara sayishmana tamasira yatyaso Before the creation, before the whole universe is manifest, then the Supreme Lord, He wants to hear Yadasa Srikshu at that time when He wants to create. Yadasa Srikshu Pura Atmana Para He wants to create bodies. Hmm? So then, by Rajagun, he breaks the balance of the Prakriti. Prakriti is in balance, so nothing is manifested. Satvara and Tamas are in complete balance, equilibrium. So he breaks the equilibrium by Rajagun. And then all the various bodies and different manifestations in the universe come into play. And by Satvagun he maintains it, and then by Tamas, when he wants to rest, then he dissolves everything. So the inner meaning here is when the Supreme Lord wants to make bodies. That means to make the bodies of his devotees. The implication is this. If the Supreme Lord is transcendental and he only interacts with his Swarup Shakti, why would he even create the world? Why would he do that? Why would he even have that Leela when the mature energy is an inferior energy. What happiness, what pleasure will he get from the inferior energy? He already has his superior pleasure potency. For what reason would he even bother to manifest or create the world? So Narada Muni is saying, Yadasi Srikshu Pura Atmana Paro. He wants to make bodies for himself means that in the previous creation, when the universe was dissolved, there were some devotees who were going through the stages of bhakti, anatta niriti, nishta, ruchi, asakti, but they had not attained perfection yet. And the, then the universe was dissolved. But when the devotee comes in the stage of asakti and cries, ai nanda tanuja kinkaram patitam maam vishame then Krishna's heart trembles and he becomes eager. He feels separation. As the devotees feeling separation from him, Krishna feels separation from them. So, because the Supreme Lord is feeling separation from the advanced devotees who have not quite attained perfection yet, therefore, by his Swarup Shakti, his Swarup Shakti causes the manifestation of bodies for them. And that causes the, what is called Gun Udbhut. Gun Udbhava, the awakening of the Gunas. And so then, the whole material energy is let loose. And the universe comes into existence as a side effect, because the material energy is the Abbas Briti, the shadow of the internal potency. The whole creation is let loose simply because the Supreme Lord feels separation from his devotees who are not per quite perfect yet, and he wants to give them bodies and a chance to complete their sadhana and come back home to him. So this is the teaching. In the pastime of the churning of the whole ocean of milk, how the Lord never, never has interaction with Maya, with the material energy. He interacts only with His devotees, with the Swarup Shakti. And therefore, the whole reason the material universe is manifest is just manifest out of His love for His devotee. And the universe exists for His devotee and only for them. So I know sometimes devotees, they, they become devotees and they wear tilak and a dhoti, but they're staying here in the West and they sometimes kind of feel a little bit out of place. Hmm? Feeling out of place in the world. There's only a few devotees and everyone else is doing other things. No, never think like that. The entire universe is created due to love of Supreme Lord for His devotees and only for them. And everything else is going on is just incidental. It's a side effect. And incidentally, those living entities have a chance to meet with those devotees as well, and then they get back to you as well. 
So all these stories in Srimad Bhagavatam, they're to teach us some profound truths about reality. But unless we hear the explanation of the Acharyas, we'll read it and it will, it will go uh, fly over us a little bit. So, so Dhamana said, Goswami, he said, Jaha Bhagavata Pada Vaishnava Erasthane. If you want to understand what nectar is here in Bhagavatam, sit at the lotus feet of a Vaishnava and listen to them. They'll explain what this means. So, Prabhur Mitram Prayevacha, Srimad Bhagavatam gives imperative orders, it gives stories to illustrate profound uh, realities that we have to know as devotees. And Priyavacha, it is also Srimad Bhagavatam is a kavya full of poetry. And that poetry is instructing us like a beloved. That means not direct, but through hints in a roundabout way. And in a way which is so pleasurable, so enjoyable. And if we'll get that message, then the heart will blossom. So kavya, kavya is wonderful. Poetry. The Supreme Lord inspired this Bhagavatam in the heart of the original Kavi, Lord Brahma. Or we can say that He inspired it in the heart of Shukadeva Goswami. Or we can say that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu inspired the knowledge of Rasa Brahma into the heart of the Kavi of Adi Rasa Rupa Goswami. <coughs> All these meanings are there. How can these meanings be present? The reason is that, first of all, words, they Shabda, sound, Shabda has Shakti, Shabda Shakti. So the Shabda Shaktis are primarily four. There are four Shabda Shaktis. And Srimad Bhagavatam utilizes all of them. The first Shabda Shakti or potency of a, of a word is called Abhidavrti. Abhidavrti. It's the direct dictionary meaning of the word. So if you read Srimad Bhagavatam, sometimes there's a description of the universe or some tattvas and the words you just take them at face value the direct meaning of the words. So that's called Abhidhavriti. Then, if the Abhidhavriti doesn't make sense, then you have to refer to the next Shakti of the word, that is called Lakshana Vritti. For example, the famous example is Gangayam Goshaha. Goshaha means a village, and Gangayam means on the Ganges. So, the village on the Ganges. So if you take the direct meaning, then that actually makes no sense because you can't construct a, a, a village on the river. Hmm? So if you say, where is the village? Gangayam Goshaha, the village is on the Ganges. What you actually mean, it's on the bank of the Ganges. So Lakshana Briti means the meaning associated with the direct meaning. So because the bank of a river is always associated with the river, then everyone knows what, what you mean if you say, where's the village? It's, it's uh, on the Ganga. That means it's on the bank of the Ganga. So that's Lakshana Briti. Then, the third meaning, and this is prominent in Kavya, in poetry, that is called Vyanjan Briti. Vyanjan Briti means the implied meaning. For example, someone may say, Gangayam Goshaha. What's the Vyanjan Briti? Someone said, I want to visit your house. Where do you live? You say, Gangayam Goshaha. I live on the Ganga. So the implied meaning is, well, why don't you come in your boat? Eh? No need to come by car. I'm on the river. Come by boat. Eh? So this is the implied meaning. For example, some students are sitting in a class and the teacher said, and, and the teacher's speaking for a long, long, long time. So when the student says, oh, sir, eh? it's now evening time. So the words are, now it's evening. But the meaning is, oh please, this class is so boring. <laughs> You've been going on for so long and it's getting late and we've got so many other things to do. Right? So the words are, it's evening time. 
but the Vyanjan Briti, the implied meaning. Yeah? This is this has can have so many things. So in Alanka Kostuba there, Kavikanapo, he said Vyangyam Eva Dwani. That Vyangyam, the implied meaning, is called Dwani. Dwani. Dwani is if you have a bell and you take the, the, the hammer for the bell and you hit it, it goes bong and there's a meter ring, bong like that. But then um, 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 um. So after the initial strike of the bell, then the waves of sound that come after that, they're called dwani. So in the same way, when the kavya, the poetry, especially this transcendental poetry of Shimad Bhattam, when that's spoken, then Shabda Vyapar, that means when the function of the words comes to an end, the speaker just spoke it, he's finished that sentence. But then waves of other meanings begin dwani. The suggestion starts to, you feel it in the heart. If someone is in the stage of bhav, then the heart is very soft. So when they hear a verse of Srimad Bharatam, when the verse is over, then so many waves of dhani, that is the implied meaning, and also anudhani, another meaning comes from that meaning. It is said that kavya is like a person, that's called the kavya purush. Just like in uh, architecture, you have a, there's a vastu purush. Yeah? And just like vidya, knowledge, is sometimes compared to a bride, she's called vidya vadu. Mahapu said, Vidyavadhu Jivanam. Sankirtan gives life to the bride of knowledge. So in the same way, Kavya poetry is compared to a person, the Kavya Purush. So the body of the Kavya Purush is made of Shabdarta, sounds and words. And the body of that Kavya Purush is decorated with ornaments, that is Alankar, different types of metaphors and similes and so on. And then, this Purush, a body should have pran. It should have life. So the pran of the Kavya Purush is twenty. The implication. And if the dwani dwani vatsyat atishayini dwani if the meaning of the implication is superior to the face value meaning of the words then that is called the Uttam, Kavya, perfect, high class poetry. There's Konishta poetry, that means there's no Dwani. If someone says a poem and there's no Pran, it has no life, it doesn't make you think of something else after you hear it. Hmm? Then it said that poetry is Nispanda, dead, not breathing. Hmm? But if poetry has the uh, Dwani, very excellent suggestion in it which is superior to the direct meaning of the words, then it's called the Uttam Kavya. And if it has Dwani and Anudwani, a meaning and another meaning and another meaning, going on and on and on, then it's called Uttam Uttam Kavya. Super, super excellent poetry. <laughs> so Srimad Bharatam is like that. It is Uttam Uttam Aprakrita Kavya. Super excellent transcendental poetry because when a Rasik Vaishnava hears the verse, then the bell of that verse goes wom, 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 wom. Waves of realizations come and that's written down, that's called their commentaries. <laughs> Understand? So, <laughs> we're discussing the Shabda uh, Bridges. Direct meaning in the uh, associated meaning and then the implied meaning. So Srimad Bhagavatam is like that. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, along with his associates, how they used to relish Srimad Bhagavatam. One evening, Mahaprabhu was wondering, he liked to wonder, we discussed yesterday, when he was wandering in the gardens on the shore of the ocean in Jagannath Puri. So, one day, another time, he was wandering there and he was looking at all the flowers and the trees and he was inspired to remember Brindavan. And then he himself, yesterday we gave the example how Swarup Damodar Goswami was reciting 
the verses of Rasalila. But on this day, Mahaprabhu himself began to recite. He was remembering how in Rasalila, Krishna and Braj Gopis they were dancing together. Upagiyamana udkhaya vanita shatayuta paha malam bidbrad vaijantim vaijantim vyacharam mandayam banam Shukadev Goswami is saying that Krishna was singing Upagiyamana udkhaya and then whatever Krishna was singing then the gopis were repeating that. Sometimes the gopis were singing and then Krishna was repeating that. Vanita Shatta Yutapa and Krishna was with hundreds Shatta Yutapa of Yutas. This is very important. In other Sampradayas, they may worship Radha and Krishna, but they see Radharani and Chandravali and Shama and Bhatra and Shai, everyone, all in, they're just all in one group. It's the gopis. But in our Gaudiya line, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu revealed Shatta Yutapa that the gopis are in yutas, they're in groups and they all have different moods. And so then when there's the prati, Prema Pratyogita, that means competition between the groups, then who's the winner? Krishna. Because they're all competing to please him. So Vanita Shatta Yutapa, Krishna is dancing with them Malam Vibran Vaijanti, he's wearing a beauty, beautiful Vaijanti garland and walking on this soft white sand of Jamuna, illuminated by the rays of the moon, it looks like camphor dust. But, and even though the forest is so beautiful with many flowers, Krishna and Radhika walking there, they are like the ornament of that forest. They look more beautiful. But then, at some point, see Krishna disappeared. Then Mahaprabhu, just as the gopis were searching everywhere, looking for Krishna, and in the madness of love, they were talking to the trees and plants and flowers. Mahaprabhu, in that garden, he began to talk to the trees and flowers. So Mahaprabhu saw Tosi, and he said to Tosi, O Tosi, Govinda Chana Priye, Sahatwali kala bhibhrat Dristaiti priyachutha Kachit tulasi kalyani O Tulsi, you are so auspicious Govinda charna priye You are very dear to see Krishna Sahatwali kala bhibhrat Krishna is wearing a garland of your manjaris and the bumblebees are attracted to that and following him. Did you see Krishna walking this way with his beloved? So Mahaprabhu is wondering, and in the mood of the gopis, talk, talking to Tulsi. But what did the gopis realize? That when they spoke to Brenda Devi, Tulsi, the Tulsi plant did not give any answer. Then gopis are thinking, she has no sympathy for us because she's never experienced separation. Because Tosi is always on the feet of Krishna, always on the chest of Krishna in his garland. What does she know about separation? Anyo Vedana Chanya Dukam Akilam. One person cannot understand the suffering of another. And she's so intoxicated with her good fortune that when a person becomes proud, so Bhagyan Mat, intoxicated but with their own good fortune, then they neglect to speak to others. So Gopis thought, Tosi will not reply to us. Let's ask someone else. Hmm? She's also not so tall. Let's ask these trees, they're really tall. And from, the, from there they can look very far. And they, perhaps they'll see where Krishna is. So Mahaprabhu was wondering. Hmm? But he's not thinking, I am Mahaprabhu. Even he's not thinking, he's not in Radha Bhava this time even. Because in this Leela, Krishna has disappeared with Radharani. So though we say Mahaprabhu is in Radhabhav, but see, what Chaitanya Tarimitra is revealing here, this time he's not in Radhabhav. So then the gopis said, go further and look at the trees. Chuta Priyala Pasanasana Govidara 
Jangva kabil ba bakalam rakatam mani ba yenye parat ba baka yamano bakula sang sang Krishna padavim su rahitat manam mana oh mango tree oh banana tree have you seen banana tree banana 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 tree has bright red flowers and when they blossom looks like a, the trees on fire beautiful we just saw one a few weeks ago when we were doing parikrama through kadamba kandi on the way to varsana chuta priyala panasasana kovida o kovida the tree jambarka bilva arka the arka is actually a, a small plant and worthless the flowers have no scent and you're not supposed to offer them to krishna they grow a lot in the forest around gopishwar mahadev in vrindavan So that means the gopis has become so humble they're even asking very small and useless plants. Please tell us, have you seen the son of Nanda Maharaj? You are like sadhus because you live on the bank of a sacred river. And because trees are very generous to others. So you're like sadhus. So be kind to us and tell us where did the son of Nanda Maharaj go? Because he's stolen our minds and we've become mad. So we want to find him so we can get back our vivek, our discrimination. But they saw the trees didn't give an answer either. So then Gopis thought, oh, because the they're male, trees are male, so men cannot understand the minds of females. So they're ignoring us. Then Mahabhu is going, going further, further, completely absorbed in the mood of Braj Gopis serving for Radha and Krishna. Actually, the gopis they didn't find the kunj where Radha and Krishna were enjoying pastimes. Why? Because yatkin jitra nagul makikati mukam gostei samastamita sarva nanda mayam mukunda daitam lila nukula pram. Every tree, every creeper, every insect in Brindavan is serving in Radha Krishna's lila. So when the gopis came close to the kunj where Radha and Krishna were meeting, then a swarm of bumblebees came. Like that, and they hovered around the entrance to that kunj. So the gopis who were looking, was, they, we won't go there. There's too many bumblebees. And they went past, and they went somewhere else. So all are serving in Vrindavan. So then, <coughs> gopis, they became so absorbed in remembering Krishna, they began to imitate his pastimes. Some of them even became black. Their golden complexion went away and they became blackish. Like Krishna being completely absorbed in Krishna and walking like Krishna, saying, Krishna, oh, hum. oh Sakis, look at me, I am Krishna. So this madness of separation was going on. So then, one gopi said, Apyena patya, Apyena patya, Upadaya gritten, Upadaya, Priyeva Gatrais, Tanvandrasham, Sakisunevrita Achyatova, Kantanga Sanga Kucha Kunkuma Ranjitaya, Vanyat Kundasraja Kulapate Yavati Gandaha. She said, Oh, look, there's the wife of the black deer. And she's got beautiful big eyes. And her eyes, uh, they look completely intoxicated. And she's completely in bliss. There can only be one reason for this. Apiena Bhagata Priyeva Gatrais. That deer, she must have seen Krishna and his beloved walk by in this place in the forest. And seeing the beauty of Radha and Krishna together, so now her eyes are just big and red and she looks completely intoxicated with joy. So then, the gopis asked, Did you see Radha and Krishna come this way? And the deer was very still. And then the deer looked around and then disappeared into the forest. So then the gopis said, It's a sign. It's, a, it's an omen. So when Bhav comes, then devotee sees signs everywhere. So she's, she's thinking, oh, this deer has just disappeared in this direction to tell us we should go this way and then we'll find Radha and Krishna. 
so that she walked a little further. Kantanga sanga kucha kunkumaranji thaya. Kundasraje kundasraja kulapate hiyavati gandaha. And as she walked forward, a breeze, a dear Samir, a very soft breeze of Vrindavan was blowing and it was carrying the fragrance of kundu flowers and kunku. So kunku is made from the, uh, the pollen of lotuses and gopis smeared on their bodies. And Krishna, he is, wears a garland of kundu flowers. Kanaka jalada gatro nila sonap janecho mrigamadavarabalo Malati kunda Radharani wears Malati and Krishna wears kunda flowers. So Gopi is saying, Krishna is wearing, I can smell kunda flowers mixed with the fragrance of kumkum. So then, those Gopis there, in such ecstasy, that means that Radha Krishna must have embraced nearby and the fragrance is coming on the breeze. So then, Gopis continued further. And one gopi said this verse, Bahum priyang supadaya grihita padma Rama jusnas tulasikali kula madandaya Envi yamana hiya vastarava pramanam Kimba binandati charan pranayava lokai As gopis went further into the forest, they saw that the trees were in full blossom. And there were so many fruits on the branches and the branches were leaning down like this. So by the weights of the fruits, the branches were leaning down. But gopis know, they have seen, when Krishna goes into the forest and begins to play his flutes, then all the birds in the trees begin to sing. It's as if the trees are welcoming Krishna. Swagatam, swagatam, welcome to the forest. And the trees becoming ecstasy that suddenly, as like hair standing on end, they burst into blossom. And their fruits appear. And the weight of the fruit makes their branches uh, lean down. And it's as if the trees are giving pranam to Krishna as he arrives. So when this gopi was walking through the forest and saw that the trees were in this position, then she's saying, Oh, and Vyaman here was Tarava Pranam. You're paying Pranam to Krishna. Is it that Krishna was walking here with his beloved Upadaya Grihita Padmo? Bahum means his arm. Priyanksa, his arm, his left arm is on the shoulder of Radhika. And in his right hand, Grihita Padmo is holding a lotus flower. Ramanujas, the younger brother of Balaram, Ramanuja, the younger brother of Balaram, did he come here with his beloved Tulas? Don't squawk him. <coughs> Tulas Alikula, and the Alikul. Alikul means the swarm of bumblebees. Madandai, they madden, intoxicated, and they become blind with intoxication. Tulas Alikula. Hmm? <laughs> being attracted by the fragrance of Tulsi and Riyamana and as he was passing by Kim Vabi Nanda Ticharan Pranayav Lokai you know if someone comes to you if any exotic person is walking and then everyone bows down then they look up they want that that person to whom they gave Pranam will give them a loving glance hmm? you know when Gurudev would come everyone bow down and look and hope that Gurudev will give you a loving glance hmm? So that is, that's the tradition if you give pranam. So then, uh, then you can stand up. So that gopi is thinking that all the trees are, are bending down and asking, Kibhavi Mandari Charan Pranayana Loke. When Krishna and Radhika went past, did Krishna look at you Pranayana Loke with a loving glance? So this is the meaning of the words. This is the meaning of the words. But because Srimad Bhagavatam is a Uttam Uttam Aprakrita Kavya, supernatural transcendental poetry, the actual pran, the pran of this poetry is in the dwani, the implication, the suggested meaning. So in the body of a Kavya Purush, you have the body, the words and meanings, the alankas, the um, 
literary ornaments. The pran is the dwani. But actually, a body is not alive without atma. So what is the atma of poetry? That is rasa. That is rasa. So, poetry may have so many meanings and ornaments and decoration, have so many suggestions, but if it doesn't have rasa, then it has no atma. Bakyam rasat bakam kavyam. The atma of poetry is rasa. So, here, the inner meaning is that, first of all, Tulasikali Kulaya Madanda, Jiva Goswami said, the bumblebees have become madly intoxicated and they're blind with intoxication and they're following the fragrance of Tulsi, but it says Tulsi but does not say Mala, garland. The garland is not mentioned. So Jiva Goswami was keeping count throughout the Rasalila. How many garlands of Krishna were mentioned? So first we told the verse, Upagiyaman Upgayan. Vanita Ashata Yutabha Malam Bitbrat Vaijanti Krishna was wearing a Vaijanti Mala. So Vaijanti Mala, it goes down, not like a Bana Mala goes down to the feet, it only goes down to the waist or to the knees. And it may have five or seven colors of the rainbow. So it's like a reflection of the seven colors in Krishna's peacock feather. So first, Shukadeva Goswami is saying, Krishna is wearing Vaijanti Mala. Then afterwards the gopis are saying, Kachit Tulasi Kalyani Govinda Pran Priye Sahit Thali Kula Bibrad Krishna's Bibrad is decorated in a Tulsi Mala. And then afterwards, Braj Gopis were searching for Krishna everywhere. They're saying the Kantanga Sangha Kucha Kunkumaranjitaya Kundas Raja. Kulapate Apivati Ganda. On the breeze is the fragrance of Krishna's Kundamala mixed with the fragrance of the Kunkum, the cosmetics from whoever. We know who it is, of Radhika. So, in this way, Jiva Goswami is realizing, oh, Krishna had three malas. But here, gopis and say Krishna has no mala. So the Dwani, that is the implication, is that in Radha Krishna's loving pastimes in the Kunj, all Krishna's garlands are broken. So he has no mal. The implication is that these gopis who are speaking are the Sakis and Manjuis of Radhika. Why? Because when one has praying, then Sarva Bhuteshu Ya Pasyat Bhagavat Bhavam Atmana Bhutani Bhagavat Atman Esha Bhagavat Uttama. A Bhagavat Uttama sees that everywhere else his own love. Everywhere. But feels I have no love myself. So sees his own mood everywhere. So when the Braj Gopis, they say, Apyena Patya Bhagata Priyayeva Gatrais Tanvandrisham Sakisunevrita Atmato. Sunevrita Atmanova. They're saying, oh, why do the deer have big eyes? It cannot really be said that the deer have big eyes and they're intoxicated because they saw the beauty of Radha and Krishna together. We cannot say this for sure. Deer eat these kind of hallucinogenic herbs in the forest and they're always, you know, big eyes like this. <laughs> but because the manjuris, the success of their eyes is to see the beauty of Radha and Krishna together. And all they want, that's all they want to see. Jai Jai Radha Krishna Jugala Milan. Radha Krishna Prana Mora Jugala Kishore. That's all they ever want to see. So when they see someone else has big happy eyes, they just assume that this deer must have seen Radha and Krishna's meeting. So though the poetry of Bhagavatam looks like it's talking about deer, by the Dwani, the implication, and by the Anu Dwani, boom, when you hear the, the bell of that verse rings, then the waves of Gopi's ecstasy, the waves of the Sakis of Radhika, the waves of the emo emotions of Rupa Manji and Rati Manjari, they manifest from the verses of Srimad Bhagavatam. I can smell on the breeze the 
kunda flowers and kumkum. What does that mean? When they smell that combined fragrance, then at once the manjus have a sporty of Radha Krishna's embrace. <clears throat> and then they go further and see the trees are bowing down. And they think, oh, it must be. Bahum Priyanks Upadaya Grihita Padma. Here the Dwani, Krishna is carrying a lotus in his hand, in his right hand, and holding Radhika in his left arm. No garland has been mentioned here. So three garlands have already been uh, gone. So gopis are saying that the Alikul, the swarm of bumblebees are madanda, they're blinded by intoxicated fragrance. The fact that they're blind is, they're running after fragrance of Tulsi, but there's no Tulsi there. Because the implication is, when Radha and Krishna meet, then Radhika's body bears the fragrance, which is very similar to the fragrance of Tulsi. And so the bumblebees are actually attracted by the fragrance of Radhika's body. And they can't see any Tulsi, they, they, they become blind with that fragrance. And the implication, the Dwani is, Krishna has a, a lotus flower in his right hand because he's trying to whisk them away as the bumblebees are coming to approach Radharani. Oh, more waves of Dwani, Dwani and Anu Dwani and Anu Dwani, floating. So beautiful. Why are the gopis calling Krishna Ramanuja? the younger brother of Balaram? Because Balaram, though Krishna, in Braj, everyone knows Krishna is the son of Nanda and Yashoda. But they know that Balaram is the son of Basudev and Rohini. So Basudev and Rohini, they are of the Yadu banks of Mathura, the Yadu dynasty of Mathura. And everyone knows that the members of the Yadu banks, they have a, a predisposition to getting drunk. You can see when Jarasandha is criticizing Krishna, he, he, he said, he, well, sorry, when Shishupal, when Shishupal was criticizing Krishna, he's saying, who is this Krishna? He's from that Yadu banks. Ever since the time Yayati Maharaj gave a curse to Yadu, all the members of that dynasty, they've been addicted to drinking wine. Hmm? So that's, they're famous for that. How did the Yadu banks disappear from this world? Right? Yeah, they all got intoxicated. Huh? Krishna got angry with the, with Jamuna and pulled Jamuna with his plow. Balaram, I'm sorry, pulled y Jamuna with his plow. Why did he do that? Yeah. Varuni had appeared in the trees and Balaram was drunk. So this is this is well known. Everywhere you look in the Shastra, it's all known throughout history. Anyone in the Yadu banks, they they always get addicted to to intoxication. So the reason the Gopi is here. All the maid servants of Radhika are saying, Rama Judastu Laki Ali Kuda Mananda. Not only are the bumblebees intoxicated by the fragrance emanating from the body of Radhika, which incidentally that's why <coughs> Tulsi <coughs> excuse me. Tulsi is so dear to Krishna because the fragrance of Tulsi reminds him of his sweet pastimes with Radhika. So not only are the Bumblebee is intoxicated, but Ramanuja, because Krishna is the brother of Balaram and associates with, ba associates with Balaram, so Krishna must also be intoxicated. Yeah. But how is he intoxicated? Kimbabi Nandari Charan Pranayavalokai. Oh, trees, did Krishna acknowledge your um, pranams as he walked by? I think that he didn't, because you're still all giving pranam, you didn't stand up. And why did he ignore you? Because he was completely intoxicated tasting Radhika's brain. He didn't even see you. He was Madanda, blinded by love for Radhika. So the Dwanis are coming. Who thinks like this? <laughs> the maidservants of Radhika, they, are, they may speak about Krishna, but whatever they say about Krishna is actually glorifying the position of Radhika. Just like... All the devotees, they'll say, what does Krishna mean? What does the word Krishna mean? What does it mean, Krishna? Attractive. Attractive. Why? Because of Krish, the verbal group Krish, means, uh, it means attraction, to draw towards oneself. Krish. 
But ver that's just a verbal root. That verbal root can be conjugated actively or passively. So if you say karshati, it means he attracts. So that's active. Krishna is attractive, he attracts. But why go for that meaning? The verbal root doesn't say how the, how the uh, word is conjugated. We would prefer a passive meaning. Krishna means he who is attracted to Radhika. So one person says Krishna is a Krishna's attracting. But those who are Radha Paksha, who are one pointed in their loving service in the shelter of Radhika's lotus feet, Krishna, we know why he's called Krishna. Because he's drawn to the beauty and loving services of Radhika all the time, so his name is Krishna. So each one of the verses is completely saturated in the nectar of the love of Radhika's maidservants here. So Krishna, he... Oh trees, you're still bowing down. It means he didn't even look at you. He was blinded, being completely obsessed with the beauty of Radhika and fanning her and protecting her with a lotus flower. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself was wandering through the gardens of Puri and internally realizing and reliving all of these beautiful moments, he's not in Radhapav at that time. We're giving another example. So, this is the example of the Vyanjan Briti, the implied meaning. So, how many meanings did we say? Shabda Shaktis are there? We said there are four, and three we've told. We said there are four, but three we've told. So, first, Abhidha Briti, the direct meaning. Then, Secondly, Lakshna Briti, associated meaning. Then Vyanjan Briti, the implied meaning. And last one is called Tatparya Briti. Tatparya means the reason behind speaking anything. You can say so many things, but in the end, what's the reason behind it? The example of Tatparya Briti is the example of a warrior on the battlefield. He takes an arrow and he shoots the arrow at his enemy. That arrow pierces his enemy's shield. It pierces his armor. It pierces the cloth underneath the armor. It pierces his skin, his blood, his bone. But that's none of that is the purpose. He didn't shoot the arrow for that reason. Why did he shoot the arrow? He wants his enemy's pran. Unless his arrow takes his pran, that shot was not successful. So on the way to taking the pran, the arrow had to go through so many things. So in the same way, when a scripture is presented, like Bhagavad Gita, Krishna tells us about karma yoga, jnana yoga, dhyana yoga, so many things. But the tatparya is bhakti. So in the same way in Srimad Bhagavatam, all the Shabda Brities are functioning. Srimad Bhagavatam is teaching us like a guru, teaching us like a friend, teaching us like a lover, through implied meanings, employing Abhidha Briti, direct meanings, Lakshana Briti, associated meanings, employing Vyanjam Briti, the, the Dhwani, the implied meanings, but the Tatparya, the Tatparya Briti of Srimad Bhagavatam, at the end of the day, when you go through the history of Prahlad Maharaj and Dhruva Maharaj and Ambarish Maharaj and all of these things and Krishna's appearance and his... Mm, Stealing butter and dancing on the head of Kaliya and lifting Govardhan Hill and dancing in Raslila and leaving with the Krura. At the end of it all, the Tatparya Briti of Srimad Bhagavatam. What is it telling us? Radha Dasya. It is only Radha Dasya. It is instructing us take shelter of the lotus feet of Srimati Radhika and follow her maidservants like Rupa Manjari. This is the actual. You take all the Shabda Shaktis together, Srimad Bhagavatam is for this. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Kachit Upasana Brajabudu Vagena Yakalpita. The best service is the service of the gopis, Srimad Bhagavatam, Pramana Mamalam, Prema Pumato Mahan. And Srimad Bhagavatam is the supreme spotless Praman for that. But to experience, what is that message? That Vyanjan Briti and Tatparya Briti of Srimad Bhagavatam, 
one must hear from Bhakta Bhagavat in the line of Srila Rupa Goswami Pada. Gaur Premanande. So did you get this realization and understanding through the literatures of so many acharyas? I got it because even though Gurudev would speak on any subject, but at the end he would always come to the point to Radha Dasa every time. That's when I heard that about a thousand times. Then I started to have some vague idea. So then our acharyas have written many, many. Today I've combined many, many different teachers, the Sandarbas, Sarata Darshini, Lago Vaishnav Toshni, Briyat Vaishnav Toshni, Kram Sandarbha, Gopal Champu, Chaitanya Mata Manjusa. Like this. So this is the uh, many persons. Even in the other sampradayas, they also study Srimad Bhagavatam. But for them, Srimad Bhagavatam is one among 18 Puranas. It has no special... Srimad Bhagavatam is great, Padma Purana is great, Vishnu Purana is great. It's one Purana among many Puranas. But it was only Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who pointed out, no, wait, Srimad Bhagavatam is different. It's, it's, it, this Srimad Bhagavatam is special. And so Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu inspired into the heart of our Goswamis and then all the Anugat Jan, this Tatvarya, actual meaning of Srimad Bhagavatam. And they have preached that as the conclusion. So I am speaking this because you have heard that Radha Dasham is the goal of life. And you may have read Srimad Bhagavatam. But why did our, on what basis did our Charles get that is the goal of life. What's the connection with that in Srimad Bhagavatam? It's there. But it's not there to the person who is reading and not entering deeply into all the Shabda Shaktis of Srimad Bhagavatam. So we wanted to illustrate this today so that there will be no doubt. Even Rupa Goswami's Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu and Ujjwani Lamani it's all based on Bhagavatam. Krishna Tattva Bhakti Tattva Rasa Tattva Pranta Sakashi Kaila Prabhu Bhagavat Siddhanta Krishna Skavraj Goswami Pari said Krishna Tattva Bhakti Tattva Rasa Tattva whatever Mahaprabhu instructed Rupa Goswami it was all on the basis of Srimad Bhagavatam hmm? and then Ramananda Poshi Jato Siddhanta Sunila Rupe Kripa Kori Prabhu Sabha Sancharila and whatever Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard from Ramananda Rai, that's what he invested into the heart of Rupa Goswami. So, all the, whatever Rupa Goswami has written is just opening, opening, opening all the Dwanis and Anu Dwanis which are there in Srimad Bhavadam. It's important to know because other Sampradayas, they may say, your Gaudiya Sampradaya is not based on any Shastra, you have so many far out ideas which are not in the scripture. <laughs> and we, no, no, no. Our, our Sampradaya is completely based on Srimad Bhagavatam. Completely. Hmm? How is that? Oh, that. Then the class, like I have spoken today, this is the illustration. How our Sampradaya is based on Srimad Bhagavatam. Any other question? So, in this class today, you're still touching the second uh, eternal yes. reason. Yes. Samarapaitum unnata ujjwala rasam sobhakti sriyam. Tomorrow we'll go to Sri Radhaya Pranayama Mahaprabhu's Krishna's three reasons for appearing, and we'll see how far we can get with Radha's three desires and the Gopi's three desires also. Yes, we were waiting maybe for the next. <laughs> yeah, it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> but I wanted to clear this and Aprita-Chirim Chirat first that you have a very strong conviction that what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Acharyas are giving is not some something detached from the, uh, the fruit of the Vedas. Srimad Bhagavatam is the mature fruit of all of the Vedas. It's based on that. Sometimes also devotees who have some inkling or um, some propensity 
to go towards the esoteric aspect of our lying. They think, well, I read Srimad Bhagavatam and they neglect it. Don't do that. Don't do that. Come back. Come back again and again. What our Goswamis have written, whether it's Krishna Bhavanam Rita or Govinda Lila, it's everything. It's the Dwani and Anudwani of Srimad Bhagavatam. So come back again and again to Srimad Bhagavatam and taste it. Otherwise, those other texts, they will be very far, be, far beyond us. Yes, just a book. How do we capture this inspiration when we read ourselves? And we can't hear from you every moment. See, Kabi Karnapur, who has sucked the big toe of Chaitanya Mahapu when he was a little baby, and thus became in, in, infused with the nectar of Mahapu's mercy, in his Alankar Kostuba, he quotes a Mamata Acharya. Mamata Acharya. He wrote the Kavya Prakash. And there he describes five results of poetry. If you become a poet, then one, you become famous. Two, you become rich. And oh, what is it? You become rich, you become famous. Uh, you can feel, can fulfill all your desires, and like this, he's saying the different results of poetry. And in the last one, he said that you get the avesh, absorption, in trans in bliss. You become absorbed in bliss. But the bliss of mundane poetry is kalpana, it's imagination. They feel something, but it's th their idea of rasa is kalpana, it's an imagination. Kavi Karnapur said the, the real purpose of the poetry is to have the complete avesh in Krishna's Nam, Rup, Gun and Lila. This is the point. So Srimad Bhagavatam is a transcendental kavya to, by taking shelter of that kavya and hearing, then we can go in the stage of avesh, absorption, in the, remem in the remembrance of Sri Krishna. But, to appreciate kavya, it is said, unless a person has some scars from the previous life, they can't. They read the kavya and it just bounces off. They can't hear the... They can, the bell goes bong, but then there's no reverberation coming afterwards. So, in order to experience that reverberation, you have to associate with kavis, with poets. And by associating with them, then a samskar comes. And that samskar is called bij. It is a beach. And even if one has that samskar, that impression, he may appreciate poetry, but he cannot write poetry. And when the beach is deeply planted in the heart, then he can appreciate and also write as well. So, Chaitanya Mahapu said, Brahmanda Brahmati Khon Bhagavan Jeev Guru Krishna Prasadi Bhai Bhakti Lata Beach. And the deep meaning is by associating with high level Rasik Vaishnavas and hearing from them, they make the beach, the seed, the sanskars that make one eligible to be able to relish the bhakti rasa. So we try again and again to be in the association of the Vaishnavas and hear Srimad Bhagavatam from them. Gradually, gradually our sanskar becomes deeper and deeper until one day we'll recite a verse of Srimad Bhagavatam and so many dwanis, waves of dwani will even if you haven't heard, but anyway, it will come by itself. Yes. So, the answer you're giving, and you're referring to the living, the living uh, um, guru. Yes. Or maybe you read in the books and the commentaries that they can offer us throughout the centuries. Everyone can read, and that's helpful. We should all study every day. Our acharyas have told us, and they've written their books so that we'll read them. That's important. But it will not have the same power. You see, if you if if it's cold in your house and you open your iPad and then just download a, a video of fire from YouTube, go like this, you'll still be cold. You can hear the fire, you can see the fire, but there's no heat. So in the same way, you can read Srimad Bhagavatam, but these words. 
The Manjuis who are searching for Radha and Krishna are burning in the fire of separation from Radha and Krishna. And as they're seeing the different features of nature, they're having sporties. The fragrance are giving them sporties of Radha Krishna's embrace and they're meeting, they're walking. So if someone, his heart is immersed in Bhav when they hear or they speak these verses, then they're having those sporties, they're burning in that fire. And if someone who's hearing, but they're not feeling that, but when they hear, they can feel the heat of separation coming from that sadhu. And then they start to get warm as well. And then when they are reciting Srimad Bhagavatam and chanting and remembering, then that the heat of, that they receive from, of separation from that association begins to manifest more and more. So, the live association is absolutely essential. Because also, the sound of a realized person's voice is not Shabda Samanya, material sound. It's not a sound that is released from Akash. You know, there's the element we're discussing about Akash. The element of ether. So sound is everywhere in the ether. You don't make a sound with your voice. The sounds are already there in the ether. And the movement of the air in your vocal cords causes the release of the sound from the ether. Mm. Just like a rock. If you get a rock, there's fire in that rock. But you can't see it. If you get another rock and you hit it, then that fire jumps out in the form of a spark. So the the, 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 the strike didn't create the fire, the fire was there but it was released by the strike. So in the same way, sound is everywhere in ether and then depending on the way that you manipulate the air element, it will, the sound will be released from the ether in different ways. Hmm? If, if, you, if you sing, oh, if you have a sore throat, uh, hmm? it's like, it depends on how the vocal cords manipulate the, the, the air causes the release of different types of sounds from it, but all the sounds are already there. Krishna said, Shabda K, Pari, I am sound in ether. So, but when there is two types of Akash, Jadakash and Chidakash, the mature ether and Chidakash means the spiritual sky, Srila Prabhupada used to say, the spiritual sky, spiritual ether. So when an ordinary person speaks, then their vocal cords release the mm, Prakritic Shabda, material sound from the jadakash, from the inert material space. And when a pure devotee speaks, then he releases the Shabda Brahma, transcendental sound from the jadakash, from the spiritual sky. So in Srimad Bhagavatam it said that that sound of that kata carries the fragrance of the kumkum particles on the lotus feet of Krishna. And when they, those particles touch us, then it awakens a bhav. That bhav means that kumkum is the gopis anurag, their deep burning attachment and eagerness for Sri Krishna. So there's a world of difference between hearing directly and reading or hearing a recording. Um, even if it's just chaya, a shadow, would not like an audio recording be one step closer to the potency of a sadhu than just a, a book? No. No. But, if it's a recording of a sadhu, it can, if you were there and you listened to that sadhu speaking, he already put a sanskar in your heart, and then you went away and watched a movie, and it was covered over. And then when you hear the recording, it will awaken that's what it was like when you were hearing from him. So in that sense, the recording would be more powerful than a book. If you, if you were there and you heard it. Or it may just remind you of your, if it's your guru speaking, it just reminds you of your guru. And then so many impressions come and there's love and affection. So that makes the heart open and more, more access to the impressions that were given at the time of association. Vaishnavas are very merciful. Sometimes they put deep impressions in us, we don't even know it yet. And later as we go on chanting, they start to come out. Gaur Premanand. Sila Gurudev ki jai, Sila Prabhupada ki jai, Nitai Gaur Premanand.